Um, my name is Tamara van Sool and I'm Preservation Manager for the Dutch Digital Heritage Network at Sound and Vision. I will tell you about a monitoring program that we started over a year ago. It's quite a mouthful, as you can see up here. Working towards a supra-organizational preservation watch function within the Dutch Digital Heritage Network. Uh, basically, it's all about monitoring technological trends in a network of expertise. Um, perhaps supra-organizational sounds a bit scary, <laughs> but all will be well, don't worry. I already said I work at the, for the Dutch Digital Heritage Network, which is a network of heritage institutes like the National Library, like uh, the National Archives of the Netherlands, but also Sound and Vision, and many more. Uh, we have a focus on collaboration and shared services, and it's developed and managed by the partners in the network. And the basis for collaboration is written down in a national strategy for digital heritage. Now, part of this network is the active preservation community, which I represent here. And I will tell you today what we mean by a supra-organizational preservation watch, uh, what activities we have undertaken already, and what our future plans are. Well, as you know, preservation of digital information objects can and will be influenced by all types of factors. Um, advancing technologies, for example, organizational policies, the changing needs of your designated communities, file formats that are getting obsolete, or even climate change. Some of these developments can pose a risk or perhaps in the best of times prove to be a benefit to the life cycle and preservation of digital information objects. Therefore, it's important to monitor internal and external developments in order to take an appropriate measures in time and this monitoring function is called Preservation Watch. If you do this monitoring properly, you know what preservation planning and actions you have to undertake. You will be prepared. So what is the problem? How do you keep track of the array of developments and possible risks? Because like you all, you follow all, you follow all new reports, you go to different conferences worldwide, like this one. You delve into information that might or might not be important for your specific needs. And for organizations with limited resources and who do not have limited resources, uh, it can, might be a struggle to keep up. Or you might lack some of the specific knowledge that is required. So there is a need for collaboration. So this is part of the answer. This is where the community comes in community of heritage organizations, where you can find and share practical expertise, where you can signal and observe new developments, where you can do research. And where you can ask experts to address specific topics within the context of Preservation Watch. For these reasons, the Dutch Digital Heritage Network starting building a supra-organizational preservation watch function in March 2021 by forming a group of experts. This preservation watch function is meant as an addition to the watch function organizations install for themselves. It's not meant as a replacement. That is why we say supra-organizational. And it's just monitoring. We're not an advice uh, group uh, for specific questions. Now, Sound and Vision is the coordinating party in this group, working with experts from various Dutch heritage organizations of different sizes and shapes, and that includes archives and libraries, museums, audiovisual and media organizations, and the digital humanities. So we have experts from each target group. So how, yeah, what does this super organizational preservation watch contain? Um, it's about monitoring technological developments uh, that may have an impact on the sustainability uh, of digital information. Um, it's about weighing risks and opportunities that these developments entail, because some of them might be very present, very pressed, and others might 
only be uh, important after a few years. So you have to keep tech on that and see what the risks are involved. It's about testing new tools and services that may be helpful in ensuring the sustainability of digital information. And it's about documenting and sharing, of course, the results of all these actions. In our definition of preservation watch, as, you, as you've seen before, we talk about monitoring all kinds of developments, technological, organizational, political, social developments, and even uh, the wishes and needs from designated communities. And though it's our goal to extend the number of topics we monitor, for this definition, in the current setup of Preservation Watch, we focus only on technological topics. The idea is to start small while setting up the groundworks for this monitoring and, of course, gaining experience because we only started, well, now more than a year, but we're still gaining experience. Within the scope of technological topics, the emphasis will be on topics that are, judging from the signals from the network, considered to be the most urgent, like file formats and preservation tools, metadata models, schemes and standards, and storage techniques. And to cover these topics, the current Preservation Watch group has been divided into three subgroups that each focus on one of these topics. For each topic, the expert group works with a stock agenda of developments that needs to be kept up to date. On the one hand, each subject is about monitoring existing products, services, developments that change, become outdated or obsolete, and therefore pose possible risks, like, for example, the file format Adobe Flash, which is not supported anymore. On the other hand, it's about identifying new products, new developments that may have potential for the heritage sector or have a risk as well, like DNA as a storage technique. We don't yet, yet know which side the coin will fall. Well, there are three groups, and I will show you ev what every group is doing at the moment. The group on file formats and preservation tools has narrowed down their research topics to the limitations of preservation tools, file formats that are on the brink of becoming obsolete, and workflows for migration and conversion strategies. A project has been formulated to expand on a study which uses the bus diffusion model to predict the life cycle of a file format. The goal is to automate the analyzation process of different file formats. In addition, the study will explore the effects of different applications on a file format's life cycle. Also, this year the group will publish about several conversion and migration projects that have taken place in the members, archive and museums institutions and we'll also publish information about cinema oh gosh, cinematographic file formats. <laughs> That's a hard word for me. The second group on metadata focuses on learning about and getting to know the differences between several metadata models. The group currently explores the possibilities of linked over data. We've seen a presentation in the morning about this topic. And also what linked open data implies for archival institutions. Another topic this group studies is what the group calls technological innovations. The group focuses on technology and bias. For example, the automatic detection and repair of unconscious bias in collection metadata and the dangers of using artificial intelligence to create metadata, one of the dangers being the unintended creation of biased metadata. The group also planned on writing about the impact the new Dutch archival law on digital archiving. But since the implementation of that law has been postponed two years later than now, the group has temporarily dropped the subject. And finally, the group on storage techniques. They will delve into different methods of storing data. There are currently some innovative techniques being developed for storing data. Um, for example, um, there are techniques that have come up with DNA, glass, or other new ways to store information. These techniques claim that a lot of information can be stored compactly. To evaluate these new techniques for heritage institutions, 
the group wants to use digital preservation storage criteria. In addition, the group also wants to evaluate some of the existing techniques like tape and file, and emerging techniques like long-term object storage and optical storage techniques against these criteria so that a comparison can be made between existing, emerging, and future storage techniques. In doing so, at the same time, the evaluation criteria can also be examined to see if they're satisfactory or if there are any missing criteria. It's the group, group's aim to publish these results this year. And even though we've narrowed down our focus for 2022 to the previously mentioned topics, the three topics are still quite extensive. We thought we started small, but it's not so small after all. Therefore, the expert group will be supported by external experts. We call them watchers. These watchers can provide the necessary monitoring actions to enable the expert group to focus on weighing risk factors and share the most important risks and developments for the heritage community within the network. Now, we have found watchers already for the groups on file formats and metadata, and we're still interviewing people for the watcher position for storage techniques, but we hope that will come through. And it's our aim for the watchers to start and publish their results in the third and fourth quarter of this year. Now about communication, because we're a network. So where do we store and show the results? There is a platform in the Netherlands, uh, it's called KIA, Kennis and Informatie Archivum, which is translated knowledge and information for archives. So most archivists know it and use it. Um, it has different groups uh, where you can post blogs, agenda items, even job entries. Um, and one of them is about preservation. Archivists are able to write blogs on, the, on, that, on that, um, that group. Now we made a specific knowledge inject, uh, index on preservation watch, which combines all the blogs that are published because the Kia platform is very good at information giving, but to search it, if you don't know where to look, it might be a bit tough. So that's why there is an index where you can just link directly to the right blogs. Now, as you can see, this is the knowledge index that's there. Um, there are the three groups again, the file formats, the metadata and the storage techniques. And underneath, you can find the most recent blogs that are published. So we'll be adding more blogs and information here in the future. Now what about our future plans? Um, we would like to continue our monitoring research and blog about it a lot because we feel we only started now and as for, of course the watchers are uh, now busy and, and researching and, and writing. So that's very, very nice. We've really set it up. Um, so we'd like to continue this next year. Um, the expert group uses Trello I'm sure everybody knows it, where you can um, make boards to manage your projects. And here we publish new ideas within the group, uh, concepts, versions of research, um, the weighing risks are there uh, before we publish anything on, on the Kia platform. Um, and we really want to involve the community more uh, and ask for their feedback. Are these the topics that they're really interested in? Or do we miss out some topics that they might be interested in? And perhaps they follow, because we are network. they, they go to conferences like these, read reports, uh, do their own research, which they find interesting for our group to share broadly in the network. So we really want to involve them more. That will be my presentation. We have a new coordinator for the Preservation Watch group, it's Kiki Lennox, and she's here today because she's presenting later on. So if you want to know more, um, it's best just to let her know, give her an email, and, uh, or ask about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tamara. So that means that we can ask questions now because we should ask Kiki, or can we ask you questions? Oh, okay, wonderful. Both ways, um, both ways. Um, okay, so um, here's a question from the audience. Please state your name first. Hi, I'm uh, Laura. I work at Memo. I was wondering 
do you have a sustainable way to keep the documentation because the Kia, Kia platform will also disappear after a while. Is there, <laughs> is there a way to keep the documentation uh, sustainable as a Duzam? Yeah, I understand. Uh, in a way? I understand what you mean. You mean the are blogs, you, are the content. Are, are, you pre are you preserving your preservation research? Good question. Um, so of course, uh, Sound and Vision is, is the coordinating party and also the institution. Um, so we have, uh, a, well, I'm not sure how sustainable Google Drive is really, here, to be honest. But, oh yes, you look very, uh, very <laughs> apprehensive about that. But we do, we do keep the, the, the blocks there as well. Um, because Kia will change and perhaps sometime, someday it will, won't be there anymore. And you want to migrate as well, um, so we, we're keeping the information there. Um, and uh, we, we chose this Kia platform also because it was already there and it had some functions that we found very interesting, like the, the indexing part. Um, and it was for free, so we didn't have to build anything because, well, you know, ev everything we build dies someday. So, yeah, but it's a good question. We, ke we keep it in the Google Drive with everything else from uh, Sound and Vision. Okay. Other questions? Hmm? Yep. Uh, David Kruger. Do, does it purely focus on digital preservation? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yes. Okay. Um, will you be sharing the Trello board with us, or is it a secret? I can. Sh I have to look it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can. I can share it later. That on. makes sense. If you okay, want. well, if you're looking for more topics for the Preservation Watch, I would say let's make use of the glorious time we will be having for uh, lunch, because that is coming up, and all of these people, I'm sure, have uh, quite a few topics on their mind. Uh, so we are going to break uh, at this moment. Thank you again, Tamara, for the presentation. Um,